got a question. Oh, we got one in the back here. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty slick at what you're saying. You're right, but they're pretty slick now. We had a, a, a news station, FM, nice and clear. Had guys like Glenn Beck, you know Glenn Beck, right? Uh-huh. Judge Andrew Napolitano. <laughs> like you said, forget the politics of it. Right. I noticed they shut them down real quick. They're off the air now. No, Glenn Beck is still on. I'm talking about on that FM station. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. Now you got to listen to AM where it's difficult. Well, you need to get that information out yourself. Be your own radio station. I hear you. Go ahead. Yes, um, you know, yesterday I just became a member of the John Birch Society. Huh. Uh, I have heard of the John Birch Society. They were the, they are the first organization from 1958 having fighting in the United Nations. Their first mandate is to destroy no, the United States inside. Well, there's, you know, that's something, when you're talking about removing the U.S. US from the U.N., the United States pays a huge percentage of the U.N. budget. But what we're, I, you know, I, I agree that we need to, uh, to global governance. So I agree we need to hold people, our elected officials, accountable and work, you know, look, don't be worried that they're going to call you a tinfoil hat. I hope you're not worried. And did I convince you? Did, am I making this up? So this is what we need to do. We need to take care of that disinformation campaign and just kill it. That is so yesterday. Forget the black helicopter crap. So what we're going to do is you're going to go down to your council and you're going to say, you know what, we're not buying it. We don't want to be part of this regional group. We don't want this scenic byway. And if you refuse the money, we will stand behind you because we would rather not have the money and have our sovereignty and our freedom than take that money. You need to do that. Let your elected officials know that you will stand behind them because they want to stay in office. People who have power want to keep it. People who don't have power want to get it. This is what we have, tremendous power, but we do not have cohesive, cohesiveness. We need to break that paradigm and get together and stop this plan. Go ahead. Um, you've dismissed volunteerism quite heavily. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also you've dismissed comprehensive plans, mm -hmm. and you've dismissed zoning, and you've dismissed the only legal processes we have on the rule mm -hmm. that's what we have mm -hmm. as a town mm -hmm. in order to fight fracking for instance mm -hmm. okay yeah. you're home we're the southern tier okay we are in imminent danger mm -hmm. of corporations mm -hmm. gas companies doing their will on our <coughs> land okay now, I'm not okay with that. all right I am not against no just a minute before you clap for her I am not against zoning I'm a real estate appraiser, a commercial appraiser. I am not against zoning. Now this is something that you will all get smeared with by like the Huffington Post, who says I'm against zoning. No, zoning helps you in determining where, how you're gonna plan your town, what's gonna be where, okay? What I am against is social engineering now. Now what I'm talking about here is not zoning. What I am talking about here is combining in your your comprehensive plan is a social document. It is not just about how your land is going to be used. It is about, if you looked at it, it's a social socioeconomic instrument for determining where people will live in your town and what they will do and how they will live. It's not yes, it is. I'm sorry, I bring it. With the whole town. Okay. Great. I'm sure everybody was there. Now the other thing, okay, now you said something else that I thought was really not right. What was it? You said, uh, you said, uh, Home rule. yeah, let's take that in a minute, but there was something else. Okay. You didn't like, you thought I was against, oh, you thought I was against zoning, which I'm telling you I'm not, that I was against comprehensive planning. I told you, planning, everybody plans, you get up in the morning, you plan, you've got to know what you're going to do. You've got money and you have a town and you agree that you're going to do something. I am talking about the usurpation of your power as people, as individuals, and as people who can elect representative government. I am talking about people who are being manipulated, who are being lied to, who are 
having corporations influence their government and nonprofit corporations that are being paid by corporations, by for-profit corporations, in order to influence your social and economic development in your towns. And this is how it is happening. And, you, you know, it's not pretty. And that does not mean that I don't think that we should zone and plan the way that we're going to, you know, have our cities develop. But what I do think is wrong is when we are financing private individuals, we are subsidizing private individuals with our tax dollars to build a development style that is not in demand, and then we are stopping other people from building what they want, what we do want. And this is social engineering. Ahead. Thank you for coming tonight and for your, uh, your research and your passion about your, the subject. I was wondering if you had had a chance to look, I mean, I know you do this everywhere, so it's probably hard to imagine this, but have you had a chance to look at the, our comprehensive plan as it exists? And have you had a chance to see, because what you're talking about is very frightening, and um, I think it was a little in Sydney, Eric, some of the comments you made, some of the words, you, I mean, it's, and it's your language, what have you, it, you know, it's your thing. But yeah, that's how it goes. No, exactly. And it's part of what you're doing. I understand it. Um, are there specific things in our comprehensive plan that are frightening to you that you think are we're going down the wrong path? Because I think uh, some of the concerns that we have in our little town, um, we talk about broad sweeps and broad ideologies that are really, really frightening to most of us. Uh, we, we, we do live for your die around here. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, yeah, we do. We haven't left for a long, long time, uh, since 1905 when they took our, the rest of our land. But, From um, the reservoir. Yeah. Uh, what I want to know, is there anything in there that you see that uh, talks about the stuff you're worried about? Mm -hmm. Because that's what we're really concerned about. Mm -hmm. I know Somebody tell her what's in our plan, and you, you be the gauge. You let us know. Give us some bullet points. Somebody. Um, I'm, <laughs> I've been quite the boring nerd, as you know, Kate, and I've read, yeah. I've read in, uh, a lot. And um, it asks, calls for riparian boundaries. It does create, this is a comprehensive, and, I, and it's a draft, and I realize I haven't kept up with the, Mr. Lamonda, what Mr. Leifeld have done, so I'm not current, but I can tell you about the original document. Um, it talks about allowing uh, density zones, a transfer of development rights. And they, what you're talking about, there are 700,000 acres out there those can be, those, you know, obviously they're not all going here, but those, that, that is a potential transfer of development rights for, um, I think, high density for, for building up populations in the hamlets. I it believe that's does have now. the, it does have the, um, uh, uh, zo it did have, I don't know what it has now, Kate, um, a, uh, a zoning infraction <laughs> for non-native plants, and I did find a couple of towns where people were actually fined for vegetables. But we do have something that that bizarre. I mean, these totally bizarre things, riparian boundaries. I mean, I live between two streams. If uh, these plans do not have any wordage in it, Kate, that says um, that many other plans have to. Uh, that after the plan starts, there's no grandfather clause that says no, uh, you know, all non-conforming pre-existing businesses and homes. I live between two streams, plus I have a pond. I hope I don't have to move into my car. Uh, <laughs> but um, there is so much in there that is... I bet it's anybody has to No, there actually isn't. There is. Well, oh, let me ask good. you this then. Can I just come to the case? Is it true that each town, everybody that's uh, looked at to, to, to adopt one of these comprehensive plans, can we not um, tailor it to our needs? You should. I know. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> but, uh, okay. The, but, but can I, I also just tell you that I'm sitting with half of my council or part of my council? Good, so I'm glad not, you're here. Thank you so for coming. Yeah, I'm so glad it's you're not here. Like, Thank you. It's not like you. you don't talk to each other. That's here. good. I think no, that's great. great. And I do talk to a lot of elected officials. Yeah, and, and so I good. just want to... So I just want to make sure it's known because I don't keep current on this stuff until I'm badgered into coming to these things. Um, each town can adopt 
something that's appropriate for each town. Is that correct? Or okay. We have to swallow well, the whole thing? where did you get your comprehensive plan? Did you come up with that yourselves, or did you pay a consultant? We paid a consultant. Eight thousand dollars. Okay. Not written by town residents. Okay, whoa, there you whoa, go. Whoa, whoa, so they, wait a minute. That's only half. Bobby, would you say I couldn't hear it? If you're going to tell a story, you got to tell the whole story. They use the kind of bogus planning system you talked about. The original plan, based on public hearings, based on concerns of board members, and based on concerns of people who came to the meetings, we have done a rewrite. The rewrite hasn't been completed. So what you've looked at is nothing like what you what it is now. Why did you say the consultants then? To get a start. Well. <clears throat> you know what because I'm saying. Because you know what? Let me tell you something. I've been doing this a long time. And every time you form a committee of fifteen or twenty people to do a to do a plan or a comprehensive plan or a zoning ordinance, guess what gets done? Okay. Nothing. Because you can't get five people to agree. So you start with a document and you tailor it to your needs and the needs of the town. What was wrong with the old one? We didn't have one. You didn't know why you need one. We don't. You do by state. Uh, we I need disagree. the byway money. It does, you're not tailoring it to my needs. New York. How now, do you know that? You haven't read it. I've read it. You have not read the, the Well, final, send it to me. And I'll no read one has it. read it. Send, send it to me and I'll read it. It but I read the old one. Yet. It's being drafted. And the, the old on one was at from outer space. Well, there, you know, we don't want to get this <laughs> argument on this lady's time. Sent it was crack time. It was extremism. We read it based on people's concerns. Everybody well, I think one of the problems that you're going to see all across the country. Yeah, like in Nazi Germany, everyone had input. One of the, and, you yeah, know, this is something that you see is that you have elected officials that are relying on a planning department that is not, you know, they're not creating these plans themselves. You're we paying, don't have a planning department. You don't have a planning no, department. No, so you're relying on some company that you pay we relied on hundreds the of thousands of dollars to? So that we can adjust it to what we feel is best for the town mm -hmm. based on the input from the town. Mm -hmm. Now what more would you like us to do? Well, you I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking when you have a, a something in there that says that people can't grow tomatoes, how do you, there's the view sheds. Non-native, okay, non-native, non-native no, plants. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about. It's taking a specific thing like that, thrown in, it's a red herring. You're using words like totalitarianism, Nazism, and you're not, you don't think you're trying to freak people out in this yeah, little right. town? You bet I am. Yes, I am. I'm absolutely. Taking issue with that. Well, you know what, ma'am? Let me tell you. You're an elected official. Now you, you're not, what are, what is your job? I'm busting. Okay, so you're not. So you're elected, and you're elected? Okay, so well, well, this is what it looks like, okay? It looks like unelected boards and commissions that are regional, that are directing your local government. Now you are a local government here. You have a regional board that is directing where your transportation tax dollars are going to go. This is the reality. Regional planning commissions in New York are directing. There are 13 of them, and they direct where the money goes. And what happens is, if you want to get that money, are you designing high-density development into your comprehensive plan? They did all of it. Do you have, they have, do you have mixed that. use? Absolutely. Do you have they mixed have use in the center of your town? In fact, our it's zone, coming to Woodstock. Our zone favors. Uh, large lots of rural sprawl. atmosphere. Sprawl. River sprawl. Okay. Are you expanding the size of the minimum lot size? Are you making it so that you have to have a large our, lot, with more than zones. a certain number of acres, have, in order to put a house have, on it? We have three different zones. We have ten, three, mm -hmm. and one. Ten, three, and okay. one. Okay. Not everyone can afford ten acres, so right. you make available one acre lots. That's right. Not everybody can afford three acre lots, mm -hmm. so you make available good one. Acre lots, or you make available ten acre lots for people who could afford and would like longer. Okay, piece. that's a good thing. I just thing. think you'd be more encouraged by what goes on in the town of Olive. I mean, I think you would feel pretty good about if you read what's going on in the latest draft. Mm -hmm. I don't think you'd be as frightened for us. I'm not frightened for you. What I am is telling you what's going on all across your country. Yeah, and yeah. You're not, you know, you, this is you the look, reality. Look around at what's going on. There are innocent sounding phrases like non-native plants. People are being arrested for planting gardens in their yard. 
tomatoes. This is happening all over the country. And that, that was our attempt to bring Rosa here, is to give us a more of a national perspective. What's going on in other states? What's going on in other byways? What's going on in the Northeast? Are, are these kind of back and forth about the drafts and what language is in the drafts and what is, what is uh, conflictive? Is this going on in other states? Because we, that will help us understand where our, our comprehensive plan and our byway fits in with the trends, the, the, the planning trends that are going on in our area. Mm -hmm. And when you get back to your scenic byway, you know, when you have a situation where you don't, where it's amorphous, where it's a living document, where it can change, we're talking about, uh, you know, whether it's in the view shed, whether something can be seen from the roadway, and then, and then, what? And then restricted use. Uh, by whether, restricted use by a legislation. You're saying that the scenic byway is a regulatory process. It can stop a, some I'm particular building. I'm saying that if your local municipality body. wants to continue to get federal funds for that scenic byway, that they need to, they need to preserve the scenic character, character of that corridor. You can apply for grants. No, that's all it is for the state. That's all the federal government provides grants. If you have some particular project, they'll no. support that. That's no. it. No, but the state. Yes, yes, ma'am. You have to yes. pass the you That's have to it. Pass the first. First. No. The if state. you want to do that, get their, their grant money, then you want to do a particular thing, you have to do it in a particular way. Correct. Okay, in that particular project. That doesn't say anything about the whole scenic byway at all. Nothing about that. Did you that, read that the, the corridor byway, management Yes, I've read the corridor management plan. Okay. does not involve any power to control okay. what happens in the view shed, ma'am. What does. happened in Dover? Okay, now what you need to do is look at the potential for losing those funds if you do not have, if you do not I told you, it's, the there's only grants for projects, ma'am. There's no sustained funding for a scenic byway from a federal or state source. doesn't exist. Yes, because no. you have, look, you have to maintain the roadway. You have to maintain well, the historic state character of the roadway. Already. That's the, the whole thing. You it's already doing that. That's already happening. I know, road. but let's just Without say that you've got... Okay, don't get so excited. Take it easy for a minute. No. Okay, so, I mean, you know... Okay, well, excuse me, you should get excited, really. Okay, so here's the thing, yeah. if you want. Right here. Um, if you've got, let's say you have... Um, Let's say you've got a stone wall that's historic, or that's a stone wall that is attractive, that is part of your scenic byway, and it's on my property. And I want to break through that that stone wall, and I want to put a driveway in, or I want to move something there, I want to build something there, I want to put up a shed right there on my property. That is not part of the scenic byway. That is not scenic. If you have an existing junkyard on your byway, you can, this project, this money will fund acquisition of that junkyard. That will money. fund if the... the town board so what money yeah. the, 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 the plans to do that. Yeah. Okay, way. but how, do, how about your people? Do how do your people feel about that? Man is when you right what, for what he just said. Okay, now listen. I mean, I've been going to these if you're talking about two scenic... and a half years listening to this sort of thing, and it's ridiculous. There is no... Right, uh, regulations whatsoever tied no, to the scenic right. byway. That's right. Wait, but that's the right. Scenic, so the regulations, no, just a minute. Right. The regulations come business. from you, so the right. local right. government, right. in order to maintain in. that scenic byway. That's what you need to do because otherwise it's not scenic. Yeah. Yeah. It's what's not it scenic. It doesn't change it's anything. It is more or not scenic. The scenic byway didn't change yeah. whether any given part of the uh, your, your town. Well, the question is, is, do you want to have do you want to have some kind of a commercial use? Let's say someone owns a piece of property on this road and wants to build some a commercial use there. Okay, and it's not scenic. Now you want to maintain your scenic corridor. Are you going to be able to get a permit to develop that? Absolutely. As long thing? as you, as long as you conform to the existing zoning regulations, you're in a commercial Home rule. district. Home rule. You meet the setbacks. You meet the, the area uh, requirements. You certainly will get a building permit. What the hell do you think we do? Walk around here and give them out for checks? I mean, I what if the byway passes in all the to towns? Make it though? More scenic. There might be some kind of interface between you and, and the local government deciding that they want it to be more scenic. But that's not the scenic okay. byway making you do anything. Well, well, then that's why you've got your scenic byway. That's the point. Yeah.
of the uh, we found documents that um, uh, once it becomes a scenic byway, the DEC or I get mixed up with the thing, and they said that the way they describe for a new any new business on the byway, it was just what you said. It was um, well, was, they have to mitigate all. They have to essentially hide, have camouflage mm -hmm. things. Yes, I found yes, it was a thing they don't have positive. to do Has anything no, actually, because of the scenic I have, byway. I have nothing. Been, I have, have to. Excuse me. Your I have the document in my car. It was sent to me from Crossroads. They were trying to figure out what this was that they heard from the C, uh, from the DEC. DEC. Yeah. And it has a once there is a byway designation, once there and this came up at uh, this came up at the um, Phoenicia meeting. Once there is a byway designation, if you want to have a new business. It was the most astounding list. It was pages of how you have to visually mitigate and essentially hide your business, even using some sort of weird camo shield thing, and you have to prove a negative that your new business would not be a visual offense. And it says in that that once you become once it is a byway, and that is why the DEC contacted the Crossroads Company, because uh, the Crossroads Project, because they said, now that we're expecting you to have a, a, a scenic by, we're going to take an interest in your project. Now, this gentleman denied that, uh, and if I had a more organized filing system, I would have been able to whip it out, but it was in a pile. So, and uh, I just found it the other day. So, in fact, what? that document exists, and they're just now starting to use them. They have these little minefields of documents that get triggered once it's a scenic byway. I will be happy to email it to you. So, Rosa, would it's a, it's a living document. That's, That's what the they thing call it. No, they say it's an aspirational about. document that can that once you sign it, it can continue to change, and the byway definition can change in scope, and it can go into private property, and it could include farm roads, and it could include anything of interest. And access to anything of interest, and it also says yep. that when they take the inventory of all interesting things, right. not to worry about whose property it is or property lines. So I couldn't find out, and I anywhere where the byway definition does not extend to. Mm -hmm. Right. What's not the byway? What's not the byway? Yeah. What is the purpose of the city byway? What do you want out of it? And what does it extend to? We're going to get a CD you put in your car it's as you drive. It's a promotional mechanism to bring tourists in, to let people know about all the inventory resources. I'm always talking about um, when you go by Reservoir Road in, well, in Shokan, I guess it is, and there's a huge <coughs> reservoir one mile away, but there's nothing that tells you that there's a huge and beautiful so reservoir to look at. Have you ever seen the traffic on Reservoir Road on a Friday afternoon? What about it? Yeah. Have you noticed, have you noticed Everybody's that? coming up here. Yeah. You that it's got much traffic for That's called tourism. Well, yes. it's, not it's not a secret. If you don't want people visiting here, well, then okay. Well, then we do. We do. See, this is it. It gets sold to you as an economic driver. If you want to survive economically, then you're going to do this. And this is how, you know, incrementally, this is how this change, these, these rules change, you know, because now you have a roadway that is, involves many different municipalities that all want to be able to maintain this money that's going to come into them for what, you know, maintenance of the road or continuation Kiosks. of this plan. And yeah. so then you're going to be restricting people's uses on their lands because if it's not scenic, you're not going to be able to maintain it as a scenic byway. Go ahead. Uh, I, I have, um, I'd like to, you know, clear the air a little bit and look at it from a, a longer perspective. Um, I, I studied in great detail the first UN document of 1972. That was the first big mm -hmm. international I like that one. I compared it to the Agenda 21, uh, which I also got from the UN, the original papers, and I compared them in a course mm -hmm. at great length. And um, the interesting thing is that people are always gullible. Both of those documents, if you study them carefully, are insidiously huge, powerful economic forces trying to pull the wool over international development. If you really look at it, it it's, it's full of hypocrisy. The same, they, they switched their language by 1992 to markets forces, because mm -hmm. that was then the current 
you know, hot phrase. And people, you, they give you these wonderful things, you're going to have standard of living, you're going to have this, you're going to have that. And, and it's just the same old story. It repeats. Yeah. Now, the, the Agenda 21, uh, we, when we read it or when we studied it, you saw right through it. It was all very hypocritical and it was hypocritical for international. Now they're trying to do it in this country as a front. But there's so many sincere people who also want the good thing. Yeah. yeah. And it's a matter of learning to, to, to pierce through what is really sincere and what is self government <coughs> and what is the sham. Mm. And it's, this is why you, you get confused because misinformation is everywhere. And the original, the real documents of 1992 were the alternative treaties right. and vanished from the internet. Hmm. I'm going to have to dig them out of a closet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's put some new ones out just this last week. <coughs> yeah. No, the, the alternative. Yeah. Alternative. What, you know, you'll see that that Rio Plus 20 was a failure, but really what it did was it solidified the um, the uh, non-governmental organizations connection with corporations with they, they, over a they, half a trillion dollars worth of oh, it, agreements. Every time every, humanity makes a bit of progress. In come the people and mix it all up for you. I mean, it happens every 10 years, and, and it's the new catchwords. And this is, we, we have yeah. to be very careful. Who is, what do you think when you say to Sam Gwen, what does she think, yeah, what do yeah, they yeah, think, yeah. and what are they trying to feed us? It's, and we have to be very patient and very careful to understand where the sham is and who's trying to fool whom. Mm -hmm. Because there are also very many sincere people in this who developed. I mean, I was part of bicycle groups. They were very sincere. They were bicyclists. And then they, they, they mix, if someone comes in and, and they're like a marionette, like a puppet, and mixes up, oh, this would be wonderful. Just do this. And then it, it turned out that 72 conference, everything turned sour. And all the things they were. I know the jargon is really great. And the concept, I mean, everyone, you know, certainly but, people but want to be green. You know, why would you not? We're going to get new lives to fool us. People are getting more astute each time. Yeah. And, uh, <coughs> is, is there a problem with doing anything that the federal government has as, quote, a designation? Why can't the town of Olive or the town of Sorgonies or the, whatever town you're in do the same thing without getting some kind of designation where somebody else or some other agency or organization has control over what happens because you have that designation? Well, with a designation without the money, what's the point? Well, there is no money. money. money, 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 money. 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 We need the money. Money controls people. That's what it is. There isn't any money. The yes, entire designation would be no money. No, it doesn't. You can apply for grants. That's all it does. There's no provision of money. But that's what they do. What do you think a grant is? They want to see the because they want to be able to get the money for their projects. Right. You know, and we're going to be part of seven that, towns. Yeah, part of seven towns. And that are you part of the Catskills? Is there a and region we're going to have to pay for it. Who's that? You're going to have to pay for somebody else's project? We are part of seven towns. Yeah. <laughs> now just listen. Part of seven towns? We have a meeting at the town hall where we had the state there, and right. she explained to us yes. that the funding is available from the state. It is reimbursable at 80%, <coughs> so the town picks up 20%, or the scenic byway picks up 20% of any project that's agreed to. So it's a way We're to part of yeah. the seven-town project. Whether we actually have a project in Olive or it happens in Fleischmann's, we're going to be part of that because we're part of the scenic bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So and we're going to be on the hook yeah, for it yeah. for 20%. Yeah. No, I'll just be on the way I understand. Like like I deny it. That's what she said. No, that's what she said. I have it on tape. No, he's he's on the highway. I love New York. Go ahead. This man has a question or a statement to make here. My issue with the scenic byway is that's not that's one legal. He's going to do this. What if I do a timber harvest on my private land, or do forest management do a strip clear cut, or shelter wood to increase oaks, or whatever? Now, it might not be written into the ordinance or whatever of the town, but you really think that's not going to pit neighbor against neighbor? I live in the scenic byway. I don't want to look at a clear cut. 
I don't care if you're managing for regeneration. Or what if a uh, wood chip mill wants to open up shop in the Route 28 corridor? People aren't going to complain about that. We live in the same way. I don't want wood chips here. And we can lose our funding. Any more or any of what's less than now? Anything, it, 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 my, my, anything my point can be used is as a method of control. I might be one of the youngest people yeah. here. Yeah. We need jobs of some kind. Right. This is going to create a stumbling block for creating regeneration of trees and young people and families because this area is dying. It's becoming a museum. Yeah. yeah. Well, do something about that. That's right. This is the tourism is not the answer. Exactly right. We have the Forest Preserve, the DP. Young man, I can tell you that, that it, it is actually mentioned. They talk about in the bioweek plan inventorying everything, and they talk about some sort of scientific way of doing inventorying <coughs> everything, all vegetation. In addition to which, the council that they, that, that is referenced in the bioweek plan was the main outside council for the entire Catskill watershed. Economic assessment report the for the year 2009. Inventory analysis. And, and not, not only the inventory, they talked about uh, they, he, he, this gentleman, John Nolan, environmental lawyer from Case University, talks about uh, talks about uh, the, the tremendous carbon problem with cutting down trees. With burning wood, yeah. he, he he talks about single family home ownership as being a major cause of of um of carbon of carbon pollution. He talks about smart growth because of the way it's going to be designed. He there's an article you could read, I think, in a William and Mary. It's a discussion. It's not an article. It's 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 the minutes of a discussion of a bunch of planners. And this John Nolan, who was used throughout this whole area uh, from Pace University, he says that um, he thinks smart growth could lead to six to eight million vacated homes across the country because the, the taxes will go up so yeah. much right. because of the high density zoning. They mention high density zoning in the comprehensive plan. They mention the allowing the transfer of property rights. Can you imagine New York City gets to sell their property right. rights? The, the crony capitalists yeah, get to yeah. fill with the new high, high uh, zoning land use tools that they mentioned in the byway plan, mm -hmm. land use tools, and the state woman did say there will be zoning changes, and it says land use tools in the byway. We, this is a, this is exactly a money right. yes. hundreds of millions of dollars that the city would make. They're arguing about the farm stand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, farm stands. We just don't want that to happen at all. We're arguing in Shandake about the farm stands. Yeah. One person actually said, well, we're going to just get a bunch of farm stands competing against each other. That's such a bad thing. But we have three five stands. That's right. 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 We have space trying to shut one down. Hanover. It's actually difficult to just get a farm stand. Okay. Alright, so I just hope that doesn't, I hope this doesn't carry over with a scenic byway and make it more difficult for something to come in here. That's all my point. But everyone has to be always. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Que more questions? How are we doing, Rosa? How are you feel? It's it's 9.30? people don't have to use any more Right. The other thing I wanted to say is thank you. Thank you for exposing the buzzwords, the things to look for, because uh, we, we're up here. How do we know what's happening all over it? And it is, I believe, it is part of a plan. Right. And so, but how do we protect ourselves? I, I was thinking of our hospitals in Kingston. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once they brought in consultants, the hospitals are ready to close. Mm -hmm. Well, you're talking about transferring <coughs> huge amounts of money to consultants. So the thing to do is to find out who the consultants are and where they've been and what they've been doing. And they ask the question, which is, you know, okay, you don't have a planning department here. I don't know what kind of... You know, you've got very small towns, and maybe you're, you know, maybe you're relying on consultants to do jobs that you can't afford to pay full time to someone. But you want to look at how much money the town is paying, what they're paying for, what these plans look like, and what they look and what they're paying, what the plan is. Is it the same plan that got paid for in Kansas? Is this the exact same plan that you're getting with just different names on it? And what? 
part of that, what exactly do you need that plan for? In other words, to really look into these things and find out what it is that you're buying. Because when you look at, I'm telling you, when you look at these plans, they are the same plan. When you're talking about comprehensive plans. Now, yeah, you can carve parts off of it. These things are designed to go to the most extreme. And then, you, you know, whatever the local municipality figures that they can get the people to accept, they'll do that. But it is a living document. These are 20-year plans that are updated every five years, and they also can have, you can have four, most of them have four, um, you can have four small updates or amendments every year. So when you have amendments, you can have changes to that document. So you've already, you had your, you had your visioning thing where you went down and told them what you thought. But you can, what happens is, with your amendments, you have people who get, you have, make exceptions for individuals. So what you have is instead of spot zoning, you have reverse spot zoning. And this is what you have with your planning documents, with your comprehensive plans. So maybe you're a good town and you've decided that you're not going to have, you know, that you can't have non-native plants here. I don't know. Or whatever it is. But these things are in there. And when you buy these plans, you can, it's, it's like, okay, well, we're how, how much are the people willing to take? And then what is going to happen when we do an amendment to the plan? Are we going to bring people in for the amendment on the fifth year? All right, or is it going to be, you know, a group of people who are like the, the board, like your charter board, or your group that's going to decide how extreme the plan can be? This is something, you know, just a minute. This is something that we, we need to be a lot more involved. If you're not going to your planning department or you don't have one, if you're not going down to your council, you're not going to your supervisor meeting every week, you're missing something. If your newspaper isn't publishing it verbatim, then you're not getting it. No if people, you don't have a paper. Most people don't even have a paper anymore. You don't know yeah. what's going on in your town. And then you have, you know, elected officials who are annoyed because they don't know what it is you want. And they think they're representing you, but they're not really sure because you're not there and you don't tell them what you want. And then maybe you showed up or you didn't show up to that visioning meeting, but the people who really had the influence made their voices known, and that's what happened. So this is, you know, the job of, of an electorate, of an involved, aware electorate. This is our job. This is what we need to do. We have been indoctrinated in our schools to think that government is boring. It is not boring. There's nothing more interesting than being involved in your town. And I think that this, you know, if you have a good town, good for you. No, I didn't read your comprehensive plan. I crashed my computer every time I started. But I, I have read literally hundreds of comprehensive plans. And I know, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, your regional plan looks like probably every other regional plan. And this is something to be concerned about. I'm not doing this for fun. You know how much money I'm making? None. I retired from my job so that I could do this. I'm going all over the United States. And this is because this is real. You know, yes, I'm incendiary. I want people to get up and do something. I need that because I want to retain my freedom. This is serious. You know, maybe, you, okay, it's not exactly like that here. So what? This, the whole point is that we are seeing an unraveling of our country now. And this is a very serious thing. And if you retain your freedom here, and if you are vigilant here, good. Farm that out to the other seven towns, or the other 20 towns. Get out there and show them how you do it. Fine.